Welcome back to PolPolitikin.com. Your home for self-help me hip hop. Make sure you go on YouTube, go on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, type in PolPolitikin. Listen to some of our shows since 2008. One, two, one, two, I'm a place to be with J.D. Riggs. How you doing? How you doing, brother? Salute. Uh, tell me about your name a little bit. Uh, J.D. Riggs, man, it came from uh, that's back in middle school. Uh, that's what, like, I don't even want to say. This might be embarrassing. That's about 15, 20 years ago. Um, people used to call me Riggs to lead the weapon. Like, just go around battling everybody at different schools. You know, Riggs from the movie, the weapon, boom, boom, boom. That's and, what I was um, say, uh, you say you don't watch wrestling, but that sounds like a wrestling name. Right, right. I see a wrestler named Riggs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, I just shortened it. I took the lead the weapon off, and I just made an acronym out of the Riggs. And it's just my birth name, Jerome David really is God's gift because he just made it, you know, have a ring to it. So that's what it stands for. Yeah, I think you're from Rochester, right? Yeah, from up top, up top of New York, yep. And then how you got involved with music? How did I get involved in it? Yeah. Is that what you have? Yeah, well, I just always loved it. My, my moms and pops always, you know, had music around. Uh, they used to play a lot of funk, though, a lot of Jaka Khan, you know what I'm saying? My dad was a big fusion jazz fan, so I was always grew up on, like, Donald Donald Bird, Blackbird, uh, you know, Ronnie Laws, people like that. So I always heard music every day of my life. Um, but then my uncles, you know, I was always around them. They showed me some rap albums, and, you know, my big brother, too. My big brother, Josh, salute you. Um uh, he showed me Wu Tang Clan when I was about eight years. Old. He's watching Rap City, and I was like, "What the hell is this?" And I was just like, "Yo, this is crazy." And he was like, "You never heard of Wu Tang Clan, man? Come on!" So I'm like, "Yo, I'm eight. You know what I'm saying?" <laughs> and uh, ever since then, yo, I bought the album. I had to beg my dad to go buy it, and uh, I knew the album from start to finish. And I've just been rapping ever since. I never stopped. Yeah, from where I hear you, were, you wear a lot of hats in the game. I heard you do more than rap. Yeah, uh, well, something like it. Yeah, I just produce, rap. I record all my artists' uh, records, um, ghost write from time to time, you know what I'm saying, co-produce. Yeah, so are you the, I know, because um, when I was talking to um, If, he was talking about high-caliber music groups. So are you the, the head of it? Yeah, I'm the CEO and I'm the founder. You know what I mean? I started this when I was about 15, 16. Um, Antoine was always dead. Well, if, excuse me, I always call him by his birth name because we best friends. That's my boy, my bro. Um, but yeah, Inf was always there since day one. I knew him since I was like, yeah, nine, 10 years old. And uh, he's always there from day one. And I just said, you know what? The record labels ain't really talking about nothing. So let's go start our own thing. And I created High Caliber Music. What's up, man? I ain't getting no care package or nothing, man. I about interviewed the whole label. I should have got a care package. <laughs> What's up? I got What's you, man. Oh, it's a real, it's a real. Send me, send me your address. I'm gonna send you everything that we got. I swear, I promise. Yeah, hey, because I know we got. Uh, I had Shea Blue on the show. Yep, yep. Yeah, info on there. I think yeah, A B on there. Yeah, A B is. Yep. So yep. who else? Who else is it? It's my man, um, Easy. Uh, he about to drop something new. Uh, Mike Johnson Jr. He's in a battle rap type scene, uh, but he got a new project about to drop. Uh, Bruce, rest in peace. That's my boy. He started it with me, um, but he show, he passed. But I'm about to drop his, you know, posthumous album. Um, there's Trail, there's Luck, and Emmy and Marina. They're singers, so you hear about them soon. So what's your what's your goals with the label? My goal is with the label is just to take it to the top, you know, on an independent scale, though. I honestly don't even want to deal with none of the major label bull. You know what I'm saying? Like, absolutely none of it. Um, I just want to create something new and provide what rap gave to me when I was younger. I want to give that same vibe to somebody else, you know, who <clears throat> of that age. I want to be an inspiration. Nobody from Rochester has really done anything, um, you know, on a major real major scale uh it's like i want to make the new no limit the new cash money the new def jam if you will 
but just with us. I wanted to be black owned, black operated. I don't want nothing else, you know, anything like that. Um, if, will we be famous? I don't know, you know, um, but that doesn't matter as long as we get what we need to get accomplished. And that's bringing something fresh and new to the coaching itself and some positive to it, not just the same regular mumbo jumbo. You know, I sold 700 bricks yesterday. Like, I don't, I don't care about that. Just real music. You know what I'm saying? I say, what did hip hop give to you? Hip hop gave to me uh, just an identity, a, a sense of self, a voice when I, nobody wanted to hear me. You know what I'm saying? A uh, friend. It gave me a lot of good friends. It gave me these too. But hey, that's part of the game. Right? So it, it gave me backbone. You know, I don't know where I would be without hip hop. So it gave me life. You know? And who's some of your influences besides Wu Tang? Besides Wu Tang? Uh, a lot of people hear my music, dog. Yo, bro, they really hear my music and be like, yo, you listen to Common and the Far Side? Like, yeah, the Far Side, Lab Cabin, California was the second album I bought. You know what I'm saying? So, Common, Far Side, um, even people like Jedi Mind Tricks, I love. Um, you know, and then it's the Jay Z, the Nas's. Uh, then we get to the mixtape era. You got the Ransom, the Joe Button. You got the stack bundles, the whole Desert Storm, you know, 50 Cent G unit dip set. So, yeah. So, you got the goat back there. Yeah, man. My man Raheem Milton uh, painted that. He did that all with two pencils, man. Yeah. You about to say, I got to look, I got to uh, check into you. About, uh, a lot of people been mentioning Ransom. A lot of people I've been interviewing. Yeah, Ransom is nice, man. His pen game is crazy. He's always been nice. So what's your current project? My what y'all working on? Uh, right now, what I'm working on is uh, I got a couple projects myself that I'm working on. Uh, so you'll hear about them or see them around. Of course, you'll hear about them, Poe. I'm going to hit you up. You, no, you know you first. You first, nigga. All right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Inf got his new album he's working on. So we're working on that, building on that right now. Mike is about to drop in a couple months. Mike Johnson, Jr., Easy's about to drop his EP. Other than that, everybody's just working, uh, maintaining. But yeah, everything's in the work. So you'll see soon. And then what are some ways you, uh, like anybody listening, if they want to start a record label, what are some ways they can build capital? The way that you Somebody told capital. me the only way, yeah. Somebody was telling me, they swear up and down. They argue me down. Man, you got to have drug money. If you don't got drug money, you ain't going to make it. It depends on where you're trying to, what you're trying to do. Um, with, with like COVID is weird, but see, that's a misconception, Po. You, you're a smart brother, so I know you know what I mean. When people just think that you have to sell dope in order to do anything as a black man, right? Nah, nigga, go get a nine to five and just, you don't have to blow up overnight. Just stack up your chips. It's about planning. It. It's like any other business. You know what I'm saying? You do have to have seed money, but it doesn't need to be drug money, so to speak. Um, it's about utilizing all your connections. That's another thing. Don't burn no bridges. I'll tell you that right now. Um, and also, um, don't be a follower. If you, if, you know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of rappers out here, dog, they be out here just sounding like every fucking body else. And it's just like, why would I want to hear a fake Drake when I could just listen to Drake? You know what I'm saying? Um, but as far as like the money aspect, you just gotta, you know, build on merchandise. You gotta promote a lot. You have to keep on promoting and switch the algorithm. Um, but don't do it to a point where people think you a bot either, um, which is a hard thing to do. Um, and try to get people, other people besides yourself talking about you. And that, those are the first steps. Everything else kind of falls into place, to be honest with you. How long you what what year you started your label? I started when I was sixteen, so that was about two thousand. Damn, I'm old, bro. Why you had to ask that question? <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's two thousand what? One two thousand two. That's what's up. 
So what about yeah. the, you know, some labels that, I mean, you know, you, 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 you named the older labels. But what about mm-hmm. like Top Dog? That's the only one I really know. But oh, you got, yeah, you Top got Dog Green TV. Deal. You got Dreamville. Yeah. What about the, the, the newer labels out? I love them. I love Dreamville and TD. You like Dreamville? Oh, yeah. I like, I like uh, old girl Ari Lennox. Yeah, she's fire. Yeah, I like her more than uh, but J. Cole cool, too. They cool. I like that uh, the collaboration uh, they came out with. Uh, yeah. So what else you do when you ain't making music? What you like to do? The dreamers, I think. Me? Dog. Info tell you. Like, I don't do nothing but make music. That's the craziest thing. Like, if I'm not eating and sleeping, or smoking some some weed or some shit, I am making music. Um, the only hobbies that I got like is boxing. I still watch boxing all the time. Uh, UFC. I catch some UFC. I try to keep up on that basketball, little sport here and there. Um, yeah, hobby. Yeah, I don't, dog, rap is my life, man. Like, real talk. That's, man, I don't really have to be hot, though. I'm saying, yeah. who's, who would you say your top fa- your top five favorite boxers are? Oh, uh, shit. Mike, of course. Mike Tyson. Ali. Uh, Liston. Um, damn, it's a tough one. Because uh, I like Winky Wright, but I ain't going to put him in my top nothing. Cause he had a short career. Uh, you don't want nobody trying to fight I, him, though. It wasn't really his fault. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they was definitely uh, like a mug back then. <laughs> yeah, they were. Just knocking niggas straight out. Um, Zab, I like Zab, even though he had, a, like I said, he had a short career. Too. And I put Floyd up there just because of uh, his defensive skill. Like, there's absolutely nobody that. If you watch. Yeah, man, you know what I'm talking about, Bo, because you sound like you're a boxing fan. Like, I don't care if you don't like the man's personality. The nigga is, yeah, he's up there. Yeah, I'm going to see if you really know about boxing. So what you think about that Mike Tyson-Roy Jones match? Yeah, Roy Jones going to get destroyed, man. I don't think that. Roy Jones, you don't <laughs> think so? No, man. You, you, so you, what, I mean, why? Because of oh, age? Are you talking about no, the age gap? I just hope, I mean, if Roy Jones fights how he normally fights, I don't see him if, like letting Mike Tyson punch him. Like he should be moving he, around and just moving around gets, until Tyson gets tired. Right, right. Because you already know how Tyson is. He's super aggressive. Once he gets in that rage, it's on. But and you gotta he gotta catch up to you. But the whole thing about it is them last couple fights you saw with Roy, he got embarrassed, bro. Yeah. He got super embarrassed. It's like last three fights, I think, he got knocked out. So I just it's his training. I remember his dad said something, I believe, that he is just lazy. Like, he doesn't care no more. Mm. You know what I mean? So, if he changes um, training technique, then maybe we're going to have a show. But I think Mike going to knock that ass out. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't see I don't see Mike Tyson like shit, man. Like, especially how long he since he boxed. Oh, it's, yeah, it's been a while. You know what I'm saying? Oh, so, wow. shit, by that third round, man, <laughs> you know, I, I hope, I, I just, I, I want to watch it just to see what happens, but at the same time, I hope people are not watching that fight to really think they're going to see a fight. That shit going to be crazy. Oh, no, it's, <laughs> yeah, I think it's, yeah, it's going to go the distance just because it's not, you know, you know how, this is an exhibition match. Niggas ain't trying to go hard with that shit, you know what yeah, I mean? And, um, I don't know if you talk, uh, they were talking about Delahoy trying to come back now, too. No, nah, he need to stay his cross just an ass the fuck out of here, man. Now, that shit was funny because he said that shit. Then Dana White was like, cocaine expensive. I was like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> Word, though. Like, nah, they lawyer, you, man. That, that's, nah. Now, I don't know if no. you know about uh, Canelo. I guess he trying to sue the zone now. And, and he trying to sue after the lawyer now. What? Is unpaid shit? I don't know, man. I get, what Probably. I, to me, what I see is, I think I think he's mad because they like trying to boost up that other boy. They got the other cat they trying to boost up, uh, Garcia. Oh, so okay. Up Garcia now, so I think you know, shit. He probably want to be the main dude, so that shit probably make him feel kind of way. Then you know they don't they let him fight who they want to fight, so you know they don't want to do that shit. Yeah, yeah, man. Boxing is a tricky thing, man. I just wish you know what it is about boxing, man. The competition, there. You know how we grew up. We had 
like I said, Tyson Holyfield, Foreman was still fucking fight. So, yeah. but we could name them. These niggas, I'd just be like, oh, yeah, him. Should we you have know what I'm saying? I'm saying you had niggas that was like good that, that like now like imagine like okay like oh boy uh Mercer. Man, Mercer be yeah. shit nowadays. Like he he, yeah. he wasn't even good like that back then, but now he'll whoop their ass. Yeah, was, that's like, what I'm Lewis, saying. The competition was like Lewis wasn't even he was all right, but shit, imagine Lewis nowadays fighting who all these heavyweights. He'd be whooping their yeah. ass for real. Whooping their ass. Yeah, I forgot whooping about old boy ass. uh he been quiet over there. Ever since he lost, he ain't been talking as much uh Anthony Joshua. Yeah, he been quiet. I ain't got a loud mouth. But I think they trying yeah, to man. fight. Uh, they trying to get Fury. Fury supposed to be fighting him, I, I guess. But I don't know about Wilder no more either. So like all the heavyweight, that shit kind of open yeah, now. Yeah, Wilder just. You saw that last fight, right? Yeah, I guess now they he got his ass. He, he tore his bicep before the fight. That's what they trying to say. Yeah, he got mad excuses. First, it was the suit. <laughs> yeah, you and then it was the gloves. The, like I said, if I was a boxer, I'd be saying all that shit right before the fight. So y'all already know. Like, look, man, my shit hurt. <laughs> right. <laughs> Just so y'all know, right. I, I lose it. Y'all already know what was up. Don't say that shit. I yeah. feel like it don't matter then. Yeah, then he, then he, how is it going to be the suit? And then you're going to fire your trainer uh, the next yeah. day. I didn't like that. I'm either. like, come that's, on, bro. That's a good like, trainer. That's, that's too, so I didn't like that. Yeah. That's not. Nah. I'll, that uh, I'll ask you about so, uh, what are you looking for when you look for artists to sign to your label? Um, What I'm looking for is just something fresh. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to hear the same, like I told you before, I don't want to hear the same old shit. You know, it's either it's different sound, different look, or a combination of both. Um, but they have to have the same aesthetic. But also, a lot of people have worked with me and I just don't sign them to the label or to put them down because we just don't match. You know what I'm saying? So if I can't be in the studio with you or you got your lifestyle too different, I just be like, he's talented, but I can't work with him or she. You know what I'm saying? So I try to look for a common bond between us. Like I'll, I'll go out and chill out with the squad. Like go watch a boxing match at the bar or something like that. Or they come, come, out, come through, chill, just smoke, just listen to beat. If I can't really vibe with you, I don't know what to tell you. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I look for. And then what advice would you give to new artists? To new artists? Uh, just as far as like trying to get on or just rap? Uh, do both. Well, as far as new artists, like I said, just follow your heart, follow your mind. Don't don't try to get caught up in stuff because, oh, you've seen it a thousand times being a rap fan of how cats get exposed for not being – who they say they are. So you just got to follow your heart, follow your mind, um, and make music with your heart. It's, it's not a brain thing as much as you think, it's a heart thing. So as soon as you realize that and realize what you're comfortable at, you're going to be okay. But don't try to keep up with the Joneses. I'm going to tell you that right now. That's a, that's a disaster waiting to happen. You got to be you at all times. Yeah, don't worry about what this next the stuff in the door. What yeah, they I'm, eat don't make you shit. That's that's what it is. Yeah, I'll say that shit like how you say be yourself. I was like, it's kind of like people don't study history because I was mm -hmm. like, you remember that shit that happened with Vanilla Ice way back? So it's like, why they didn't study that? They should have thought that back then. Like, yeah, you got exposed a long time ago over that shit. Oh, that was in the 80s. Yep. You got exposed over that shit. So it's super exposed. There was no internet either. You know how. You know how fake you got to be to get exposed like that with no internet, nigga? Damn. So, yeah. You cats don't listen. There's a whole bunch of rappers that got exposed, bro. You know what I mean? And it's just, it happens time and time again. Like, you saw that like, shit with, uh, oh, they've been looking at 6ix9ine himself. I guess at first it was supposed to be been like 150, but I guess that shit dropped all the way down to like 45K now. So Yeah. I think he's running. But that's what he get. Yeah, you saw that shit. Uh, that shit was dope, man. I guess he called Gil. That shit was crazy. It was funny, though. Because he called mm -hmm. Gilly. Man, he was telling Gilly, like, oh, this going to be the biggest thing in your life. Like, I'm going to tell you whatever you want to know. <laughs> and Gilly was like, well, the biggest thing in my life was my kids. And I don't really want to interview you. It's quick. But he been doing, yeah, like, right. interviews all of a sudden now, though. But, like, the main people, like, like I said, Gilly, like, the real ain't going to fuck with him like that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's over for him. 
but you already know he's stuck in a bad spot. I actually feel bad for the kid. At the same time, man, you know what the hell you was doing, man. You know what I'm saying? It is, he just goofed. So he deserved what he did, man. It is what it is. I be trying to figure out about the, uh, I don't know how deep you into this stuff, but you know about that dude, Academics? Yeah. Yeah, so Academics is like, he'll be riding with him. Then mm-hmm. Academics like flipped on him like, man, I thought you'd be selling more, all the, all the trolling you did, all the stuff you was doing. But I'm like, shit, I thought you supposed to be with him, so. Academics. Yeah, I thought that was your miss. Yeah, so he'll flip back and forth too on you, so that should be kind of Yeah. Funny. Yeah. It's, it's the, like I said, industry crazy, bro. It's, so I said, I want to I want to do what I want to do. I want to kind of stay away from that type of shit, you know? <laughs> y'all That's doing, crazy. Y'all doing any tours yet? Any, like, major tours? Nah, nothing crazy. You know, we might go on the road for, like, four or five days straight. Um, But as far as, like, oh, yeah, I got a show in Europe. and Nah, nothing like that yet. You got to. Yeah. We still gotta build the brand. I was actually gonna um, ask you about this, man. Everybody doing the live screen shows now, so you and y'all mm-hmm. gonna probably start getting into that or what? <laughs> Are y'all gonna wait? Cause see, like a lot of people, I noticed that they've been doing like uh, Jimmy Kimmel. He's doing yeah. virtual live shows now. He's now on the YouTube ad. Word. Yeah. Yeah, Word. I heard about him, but I just don't get it. Like, you ever heard about something, Poe, and you just like, okay you just don't get it you know what i'm saying like i don't see how it's feasible to see somebody over a screen like this is cool an interview but like a concert like hey my man like especially with music like comedy is different but music is like dog well i can just watch a music video i don't you get what i mean no yeah i think so, um, actually so we saw the first couple ones the, the one that first started the first one erica badu but yeah, she made it, I remember she made it different. I saw that. She was doing it in her house. So it's like, you got to yeah. do something to make it more intimate, I guess. Yeah. That was cool. Yeah. I vibed out to that. But, like, it's just some people just, like, I, I saw Ray uh, Shremin doing that. Remember those? those yeah. Things? Yeah, they from Mississippi. I was just like, <laughs> I was just like, I could jump in, in his own room in front <laughs> of his phone. No offense to him, but, I mean, it just, it comes all funny to me. I'd rather just wait, wait it out a little bit. That's all. Say, so what you think about all the versus battles so far? The versus battles, yeah, them joints are funny. It started what they start off with just Blaze and Swiss. Yeah, pretty. Yep. No, I think yeah. it won the uh, it one of them. Yeah, yeah, one yeah of them. I think it was something like no, it was Timberland. 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 Yeah, it was Timberland and Swiss did yeah. that shit. That's right, and then um. The best one so far, to me, honestly, was Jill Scott and Eric Badu. I was vibing all the whole time. Um, they got some weird matchups sometimes, like DMX and Snoop. I was like, eh, I don't know about that. Um, you watch it? Which is, it's entertaining, though. Did you watch that one? Yeah, I watched it for a little bit. Uh, I had something I, else I, to I do. I on that one, man. They was trying to say DMX won. I think that's just the biased New York people saying DMX won. <laughs> I like Snoop you know we New Yorkers. We New Yorkers. I was like, so he, yeah, did we it. he won on that damn freestyle because Ben Max was stuck on that freestyle for a minute. <laughs> yeah, he was. I then, saw that later. I was dying laughing. I like the Jada one though. The Jada and Fab because Jada, Jada. Oh, that was cool. hilarious. That was hilarious. I don't know what Fabulous was doing with that. You know like, what I mean? Like his song selection, I should say. Yeah, I said, what you think about the the one coming up, man? That shit go. I was like, deal. The uh, Patty LaBelle and uh, Gladys Knight. Yeah, the Patty LaBelle and Gladys Knight coming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know about. I, I ain't tuning in. Gonna probably, gonna probably be this week coming up. Oh man. That shit was whole lot of- I don't, I don't be too disrespectful, but that shit was funny. They said, while you watching that shit, all of a sudden you gonna get one of them little. Uh, Strawberry candies. They, the, the, you know how the old women get them strawberry candies? <laughs> they said, oh, will you watch that hey, shit? Hey, yo. Go ahead. <laughs> yo. They're going to pass you a tissue with your head. Okay. They're going to do that shit. Yo. They can't be up all late doing that shit. That shit gonna yeah, they're going to have <laughs> Word up. They're going to have church fans and shit they're going to give the niggas to. But yeah, I want to say, say it's this week for sure. I want to, yeah, they just announced it last week. So yeah, in a couple weeks. Yeah. Ago, 
I ain't tuning into that, bro, bro. I ain't gonna hold you. <laughs> nah, people like it. People are like, I don't know. I think I was like, man, I don't know shit. I'm gonna say Patty might win, but I was like, man, I don't know if Gladys Knight gonna play her pip shit. She might win off the pip shit. Man, Gladys Knight got some joint. I was like, Gladys Knight like, way too bad. Now. That's what I said. I said yeah. they, they said they reaching now, boy. Shit, they must yeah, be like a lot of people. Yeah. I know Mary J. Blige said she ain't gonna do it. Yeah, she said she ain't gonna do it. I actually thought yeah. the, uh, I was thinking the 50 and T.I. would be a good one. That would be dope. That would be dope. Do or I was even thinking 50 and Ja Rule, but I don't think 50 wanna do Ja Rule. Oh, because nah, he already knows what's about to happen with that. Yeah, he, he might, yeah, because Ja Rule got some hits. <laughs> yeah. Especially, especially now, I think we go back and listen to that shit now, we're gonna be like, wow, because Ja Rule has some hits too. Yeah, Ja Rule has some joint. Ja Rule has some joints. I actually personally like Ja Rule's first two albums. I don't. I, I was like, why y'all hating on this man? Yeah, then my whole thing with 50, I was like, 50 smart. Because to me, it was like 50 basically, right when Ja Rule moved out the way, he started making the same type of music. So I was like, man, he just got him out the way to make the same kind of music. So <laughs> then he started making Candy yeah. Shop and 21 Questions. That was the shit you was missing Ja Rule for at first. So that was yeah. Cool. But yeah, Ja Rule got that shit, so I want to see. Hopefully yeah, it was kind of weird, before, you know. I was like, um, I guess they got to figure out who to give him, but uh, L.O., I think he'll be good on there. L.O. Cool J. Oh, L.L., L. yes, Maybe sir. Him L -L Maybe him and Cube would be a good one. You think Cube got enough hits, though, for L.O., like on a on a big scale? Nah. Only one yeah, that, that's like, the thing L.O. had. He was saying he ain't going to oh. want to do it, because I was thinking, um, Maybe Jay Z, but I was like, man, I don't even know if Jay Z. Nah, Jay Z. Nah, I don't think so. I don't think Jay Z ever gonna touch that. I think LL would be a dope one, but he gonna have to go against. Uh, That's what I'm saying. Shit, who King, he gonna fuck nah, with? Nah, Kane ain't gonna. Ain't Rock Kim could do it. There's gotta be some. Oh, KRS. Man, he gonna get him though. He got because L got the LL and KRS would do it. But I'm saying L got the commercial stuff, so he automatically gonna win off that one. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I'd be like, I was actually looking at that shit, man. I was like, it's kind of crazy because it was like L started that little R and B singing shit, you know, the little Drake yeah. shit. He started that he shit. Was the original that Drake. <laughs> he was the original Drake. If it Everybody wasn't was him, it on was him. You remember that back in the day, bro? And all the dudes were like, man, L O soul. And then you heard the rest of his album. I was like, oh, it's like, he's spitting. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah, it's the same effect. But LL, man, yeah, that's a tough one. I think the next one should honestly be Buster Rhymes and Missy Elliott. Yeah, I actually just, I was listening to, a, I think I was listening to a Nipsey interview, and he was talking yeah. about how Buster Rhymes gets overlooked. Yeah, he's like, one of yeah, the Nobody illness. really talked about him, but shit, he was putting it down. Yeah. And then if he you really think about, I know he was in that group before, even before he, you know, went solo. So you got to count. Yeah, ladies in the new school, yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, leaders of the new school. I got their album. Yep, that was another yeah. one of my favorite albums. All right, man. So, what would you like to uh, what would you like to say to your fans and supporters? Hey, man. You know, thank you for supporting me. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for Poe for having the nigga. Uh, but to all my fans and supporters, like I said, keep on supporting me. Keep on looking out. I support you, even though you probably don't see it. Um. I love y'all as much as you don't know it. I do love y'all. Uh, shout out to Rochester, New York. Shout out to Buffalo, all my niggas out there. Shout out to all my niggas in New York City. And, um, you know, we're going to keep this HM shit rock. You already know. Shout out to HM is the gang, too. All right, man. I want to say thanks for coming through Paul taking with me. You already know, bro. I appreciate you for having me, man. We got to do this again. You heard?